It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and passing the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project requirement, a customer wants to use cloud identity as a primary IDP. The customer wants to use other non-GCP SaaS products for CRM, messaging and customer ticketing management. The customer also wants to improve employee experience with single sign-on or SSO capabilities to securely access GCP and non-GCP applications. Only authorized individuals should be able to access these third-party applications. What action should the customer take to meet these requirements? So, in this case, you are providing a solution to a customer and they have certain requirements. The requirements are that, one, they have to use cloud identity and we want to use that to solution a requirement where they can access other applications used by people in the company using that single identity provider. So if you consider the requirements analysis, cloud identity as a primary IDP is a requirement. So other apps are going to use cloud identity as a source of the user authentication. They have to be able to use non-GCP SaaS products. So not just Gmail and slides um, and things that are within G Suite or other applications within Google Cloud. They should be able to use say external CRMs. They need single sign-on capabilities. So to reduce the user friction, if they log into say one place, in this case cloud identity, they should automatically be logged into some of the other applications that they regularly use. They don't want to have to have a separate set of credentials for each individual app and keep having to log into each of them. Lastly, only authorized individuals should be able to access these third-party applications. So in this case, what we are saying is that the organization admin should have control over which employees access which apps. Keeping all of this in consideration, now let's look at the options that we have. Option A suggests, remove the employee from cloud identity. Set the correct license for the individuals and resync them to cloud identity for the changes to take effect. So where are we setting this correct license for individuals? It says remove the employee from cloud identity so they no more have a, a email address at this company. Now it's setting the correct license but where? They don't have an account on cloud identity or on the service provider. So what exactly are you doing with respect to setting a correct license and then resyncing? There just is no way to do that. The way identity providers work is not that you submit the license for the software that you're using or the app that you're using to the identity provider. And there's no way to then resync them either. Um, at the end of it. So option A is just not workable and therefore we will eliminate that. Option C suggests remove the individuals from the third party applications, add the license to cloud identity and resync the individuals back to the third party applications. Now similar to the previous option except that we first remove them from the third party apps. So the assumption here is that each of these users already have an account over there with a specific email ID that is not the one provided by the company probably. And now we remove them from there, add this license to cloud identity somehow, which again is not possible. You don't add a license for that software here. And then resync to make sure that they have all the uh, access. Again, that's just not the way these identity providers work. Um, there is no way of adding that license to cloud identity and resyncing to third-party apps that does not exist. Therefore, we'll eliminate option C also. Option D suggests copy user personas from cloud identity to all third-party applications for the domain. Well, firstly, there's nothing called a user persona when it comes to cloud identity. 
And to have to copy that to all the third party applications, even if it was there or each of the individual accounts, it adds a lot more overhead and administrative work to make that work. So this is not a good option anyway. Now, one of the things you will see is that all these options seem just not workable. They're just not sensible. It is not that it might have worked and doesn't suit a particular requirement. So remember to learn about identity providers, what is single sign-on, uh, what cloud identity does for you, and all of that when uh, preparing for the certification. So let's learn a bit anyway about all of this. And let's use option B to do that. Option B suggests configure third-party applications to federate authentication and authorize authorization to the GCP IDP. So in this case now, we are not giving these licenses anywhere and submitting it to the identity provider or the third-party application. The licensing, whatever account you have over there, still is going to be a part of that service provider. All you're going to do is you're going to federate the authentication. So the authentication is going to happen in IDP and then it's going to pass that on to the third party application. The way this works is typically a user will enter their password in one place. In this case, it will be cloud identity, which is a uh, um, identity provider. And you would have seen this in other applications. When you log into certain web pages, they will say, Login using Twitter, login using Gmail, login using Facebook. What that means is essentially your identity remains with whoever the provider is, but it will receive that authentication information. And now the app can work with that identity as opposed to maintaining or recreating each person's identity as a part of their application. So this becomes a single point of truth, a single source of truth with respect to identity. There are multiple providers uh, in this, sorry, there are multiple players in this. So there is you or a user agent, somebody who acts on your behalf, an app that acts on your behalf. When you try to log in to say a third party uh, service provider, a third party app, it will then redirect that request to the identity provider saying, hey, give me the authentication and give me the credentials for this person. Well, not sorry, the credentials, but some form of identification for the person, say like a token. And that is provided by the identity provider to the service provider and allowing you to use the application. The interesting thing about cloud identity is that it can also control which apps you are able to access. So as part of the organization setting, you can create organizational units that say the support team can access say the customer support apps, the sales team can access the CRM apps, whereas everybody can access the messaging app, the collaboration suite, and the uh, HR app. So cloud identity in combination with G Suite gives you this, um, uh, this feature too. Therefore, combining all of this, we have a way to configure external SAML or OpenID Connect apps via cloud identity. There is low friction because you're going to sign on only in one place. You enter your credentials only in cloud identity and that will get federated to the other apps. We can configure the organization units also for specific apps. So you can control which users have access to which particular third party apps. It is not open to everybody. As a more recent feature, you can also enable SAML apps for specific groups of users in your organization. So if you consider the requirements, this solution matches all the requirements that we had at the beginning. And therefore, option B to configure the third party applications to federate authentication and authorization to the Google Cloud IDP becomes our best option. Now it's time to subscribe to all the great content we've got lined up for you to learn Google Cloud and to help you with the certifications. Mm -hmm.